Welcome to Cafecito Con. We are a show where we invite guests to inform us, enlighten us, and inspire us by sharing about themselves and the spaces they step into and make their own. We're your hosts, Rosa Martin Munoz and Dalila A. Vasquez, an intergenerational duo hoping to bring you conversations about women, with women, and for women. We hope to build a community without borders that can express, inspire, inform, and lead to true self-growth. We call our talks Cafecito Con, to have an open forum for a variety of conversations and content. We want to share a cup of love and create spaces for womanhood, to chat, to learn, to grow. We want to reclaim our spaces of conversation about each other. We're not gossiping or chismeando, we are compartiendo, sharing our stories, more importantly, we are giving our best to each other. We'll talk about faith, life, business, hopes, and dreams. At least that's our dream. And with that, I'll pass it over to you, Delila. Thank you. Good, good <laughs> afternoon, everyone. It's a great day. The sun is shining. It's a little bit too hot in my side of the world, but um, we are really happy to have a person filled with creativity a young entrepreneur, someone who has really built her world around her creativity. So I'm, I'm really excited to bring her in and, and hear what she does and how she does it. Um, and hopefully it will be both entertaining and inspiring for everyone. So thank you, Lily, for saying yes. Thank you very much for joining us. To see the young woman that you are is just admirable. I am just full of pride with what you're doing and how you're going about life. So thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank afternoon. you. Good morning. <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, definitely hearing those things makes me really happy. Um, I, I love what I do <laughs> and how I found it and how I grew into it and how I really never thought that I would be doing what I do. <laughs> And that I would love it as much. Oh, and, I, and it shows, and it shows. Um, but let's get started. Let's get to know you. Tell us a little bit about you. Who's Lily? I'm a 34-year-old <laughs> young <single> mom <laughs> of a little boy named Eli. I guess a lot of the things that I do um, to set an example for him. I work really hard. I'm a hardworking, independent person. I've always been, I have a, a mind of my own. <laughs> and um, I, I work hard for what I want and usually I really go for it. And I think that that's what we're all called out to do. And, you know, I, first of all, I wanna say to you that I admire how much resilience you show in what you do and how you go about life. I have three daughters, but I have them um, with a husband and that was hard. <laughs> you're like you said, you're a single mom and you have your own business and you're making it through. So what inspires you? Where, where does the energy come from for you to be able to manage everything that you manage? Um, honestly, my son, um, the example that I'm setting for him, uh, what he's able to look at in me that he can be proud and say, that's my mom. Um, thankfully, even though I'm a single mom, um, his dad does help a lot. He's a, a great dad. Um, so I think that makes it easier. Um, a lot of, I know a lot of single moms where the, the other parent is not involved and it's way harder. Um, so thankfully I have the help. I also have my mom and my sister who are always there to help me. Um, so I think it, it makes it easier, but it is, I mean, being a single parent, it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. So, you, but you have your village. <laughs> yes. yes. And that's good. That, that's yes. very good. So without wanting to keep everyone else in suspense still, um, <laughs> what is it that you do? Tell us about it. So I restore furniture. Um, I started actually just with the table. I saw it. I fell in love with it. And I was like, hmm, that would look nice in another color or a little bit better if I would fix it up. So I restore <laughs> everything that I see that it's like it needs, it can just use paint or a little bit of work. That's what I do. 
So like you started with a table. What, what was, was it a table for you or a table for someone else? No, it was actually in the, in the uh, backyard of my uncle's house. <laughs> my uh -huh. uncles and my aunts, uh, they had it in the backyard with a, a lot of flower pots on the top. Um, and I'm like, oh my God, that's really nice wood. <laughs> Why do they have it back there? And uh -huh. it, it was huge. I mean, it, it was a huge table. He charged me to sell it to me. Oh, he sold it to you for $25. He sold it to me for $25. Um, up to this point, I still have the table. I fell in love with it. I fell in love with everything, uh, the sanding. So I started with just one table. I posted it on my Instagram. <laughs> I posted it on my Instagram, and um, my friends were like, oh, my God, that's so nice. How did he do it? I was like, hmm, maybe I should keep learning. So I just kept going. Lily, so you're living a childhood dream of mine because I grew up watching TLC, HGTV, and watching these shows where they're restoring furniture and creating them into treasure. You, you have that vision. And, and I love that you get to work with your hands. You know what? I've, I've never, I never, if you asked me maybe like 10 years ago if I would be doing this, I would have said no. Um, I used to work in a construction office, renovation office. Um, so I was always, you know, you work in an office, you go professional with your heels, your nails done, your hair done. So I would have never thought since I was little, I was really like girly and, you know, I, I would have never thought to do this. <laughs> but my mom was very creative. So I grew up learning what she would do, how she would um, get like old things and make them like kind of new, you know. So I, I don't know, it's just... You never saw any shows where they restored furniture or before, any, like those house before I started getting interested in it. No. Wow. <laughs> wow. So the inspiration came from your mother. Yeah. Yes. She was always very creative. Um, she was always, um, I mean, our house, it was always cleaning and moving furniture around to give like a different vision because she would get really bored. <laughs> <laughs> to having the same furniture and everything so she would just switch it how she wanted it I wish our audience can see you on our zoom right now because yeah. your background <laughs> is just so gorgeous very artistic the colors that you have the pinks the reds different designs you have Mexican influence there it just looks so beautiful and that's not something that I you know is comes naturally to me but I admire the people that are able to pull that off and you're definitely someone that I guess it's a newer, a newfound um, craft, but you definitely have an eye for it, for this design. Yeah, and I think that the talent uh, runs in the family, right? My daughter's dance at uh, Folklorico and Lily's grandma would uh, sew these beautiful costumes for the girls to dance with. There was a legacy in your family with the, with the creativity. So you started with one table, right? And then what happened? And I couldn't believe how much I loved it. <laughs> the whole process from cleaning it from, because like I said, it was outside, so it was full of dirt. It was a needed sanding. And um, I, I started sanding with my hand. So that was pretty tiring because I was learning. After that table, it was just, I want to learn more. Mm -hmm. So I kept doing research, uh, different methods of, of doing everything. I learned how to reupholster chairs in there. Um, yeah, it was just four in the morning. I was still on YouTube doing research. <laughs> so you kept that one for you because you said you still have it. What was your first gig? What was your first job? My first job. Oh, wow. Did you um, sell it? Was someone, did someone commission you to do it? I what do you remember? The first pieces that I made um, were for me. Um, I also have this this vanity. Well, I have this vanity that I made that I got bored of it, like my mom used to do, and I sold it on offer up, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so then I started getting little pieces and be like, oh, maybe I can post it, fix it a little bit, and just post it on social media. And it just it just started from there and it kept going. Yeah. yeah, I know that recently you did your refrigerator, right? Yes. I, I saw that. So describe to us what you did with your refrigerator. So um, I like to paint and I like to have my own things however I want. 
I was not happy with my old refrigerator. I thought it was boring because it was only stainless steel. <laughs> only, okay. <laughs> so I was, <laughs> and I love color. So I wanted something, I already had in my head, I wanted something different. Um, but that was like maybe a few months ago. I would say maybe like, no, maybe like a year, like a year ago. Um, recently I was doing uh, research for one of my customers for kitchen cabinets because I also um, refurbished the cabinets uh, and I, I customized them. I was just doing a little bit of research and I saw this kitchen and it had a pink refrigerator, like old school. I completely fell in love with it. But I looked at the prices and they were around $4,000 to $5,000. Steve. <laughs> yes. So I was like, you know what? I was like, I wish I could just find an old refrigerator and I can paint it. Um, that still works good and it's fine, but I can't, I can't restore it. I think it was a week after I walked into a state cell. Um, that's where I get a lot of my pieces. Mm. And right as I walked in, it was right in front of me the refrigerator. I saw it. I opened it. It was like brand new. And this, I mean, this is an old refrigerator from like 70s and 80s. And um, it had the price for 125. Wow. I, I always try to like save money. <laughs> so I asked the person, what is the Lisa you guys will take for it? He's like, give me $75. So I got it. I cleaned it up, brought it home, cleaned it up. Um, sand it a little bit outside and paint it a pink. <laughs> it looks like a Barbie house refrigerator. It is so cute. <laughs> but now you have your pink refrigerator, right? <laughs> yes. Did you do? You did the inside too, right? You refurbished the inside too. Well, I it wasn't really in that uh -huh. condition. Um, I just took everything out, and um, you know, like my mom, she's a very clean person. <laughs> I took everything out and I completely washed everything. And honestly, it didn't really need much. Um, it looks brand new. It yeah. works way better than that. <laughs> <laughs> but your stainless up. steels one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly, the, the, the freezer is amazing. I have no complaints. And then I, I matched it with the gold and the pink um, accents Ooh. and the handles. So pretty yeah. happy with the refrigerator. <laughs> no, no, it's it's really cool. I see some of the pieces on uh, your the media handles, right? Every now and again. And I see that sometimes you have something that is really classic and then you bring it to life. Do you have conversations with your customers of what they want? Or do you see a piece and then right away you imagine, oh, this is how it would look better? Um, it goes both ways. Um, I have some customers that are already set on what they want and um, like a specific color or different handles or it just depends and of course like you know i give them what what they're asking for but there's some other customers that will be like do whatever you want like use your creativity and just do it so i have that freedom also in some pieces that i buy that i purchase myself to to resell um there's sometimes that i just see a color and as soon as i see it i'm like this color is gonna go amazing on this so when did you start? Um, I started doing it um, before I had my son. I would say around 10. What? It started as a hobby. Amazing, amazing. And I know with the pandemic and everything, I mean, this, is, this serves as inspiration because a lot of people were either forced or took that time to really start a business, do what makes them happy and try something new. For you, I'm, I'm really highest ticketed item that you sold and how much did you buy it for originally um i actually just sold a really nice set of mid-modern um dressers i walked into a state cell um in the last room there was this two beautiful dressers and those usually just went like that they sell for over a thousand dollars um when they're actual wood, these were laminate, so I did know that the price was going to be a little bit less, but they're still expensive. Um, I sell them for $60 each. Um, I still asked if that was the least because, of course, I always want to make profit um, when I can, and, um, and she said $80, so I took both of them, and within a week, they sold for $800. Nice. nice. I love that. Yeah, I mean, you do have to 
put a price tag to your talent, right? Because sometimes mm -hmm. people say, well, you know, if you bought it for that, why did you sell it for that much? You know, why didn't you sell it for less? But you have to value your work and value the, the time that you put in. And if you're going to store it, you know, that there is the cost of storing it too that comes mm -hmm. with it. Because the longer you have a piece, the less money you have available, right? The, the, the cash flow goes, goes down because you need it, right? To, to buy more, to keep working. How, how many hours did you spend on it? I would say maybe a day and a half. All mm -hmm. right. Yeah, it's, it's um, when it comes to like, for example, the pricing, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, you have to learn what, you're, what type of furniture you're looking for, the type of wood, what does sell actually, what doesn't sell. And I learned, I bought expensive dressers and I barely came out even. This was before um, because I didn't know enough. Um, you have to sign up to state sales to, you have to be driving around looking for yard sales or people that are selling the same, the, the piece that you're looking for, uh, picking up, dropping off, all of that takes. Absolutely. Has there been a piece that was, hard for you to part with him and my husband is creative and he has his own creations right and whenever i ask him you know what's the most beautiful guitar you built and he always says the latest one <laughs> and he has a tough time separating have you experienced that tell us about that yes i actually um i found a dining room set um a couple years back i was still um sharing the house with my mom um, so I had the space and my mom has a huge house. Uh, um, so she, she had the space where we had the space for it. I restored it completely from free of cold string. Um, the fabric was actually like the colors over here, very bright. Um, my grandma actually, she did the, the cushion for the bench for me. Um, I did not want to sell it. <laughs> I did not want to sell it. I had customers come and tell me, I'll give you a thousand five hundred. I'll give you this much. And I did not want to sell it until I moved from my mom's house and I got my own place. I'm like, yeah, this is not going to fit there. Mm. <laughs> so I had, I had to sell it. That was a really hard piece for me to sell. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. You know, when you're creative, your, your heart goes into your creations, right? And the, the other piece that I saw recently you posted was something you made for your son for his birthday. Oh, yes. Um, I had this dresser. He loves superheroes. He wanted a new iPad, and I said, no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like him using iPad so much. I'd rather him use, like, a little bit more creativity for him. Um, so I was like, what can I give him that he's going to love? So I started restoring a dresser with each drawer, um, different superheroes color. And then I put a, a decal in front of it to see what superhero. And he, it's in his room and he loves it. <laughs> Amazing. I know spirituality is one of our questions that we typically ask for the end. But I just wonder, because when I'm in my creative mindset, it's because I'm doing, I don't know, doing a collage and I have music on and I'm taking my time and it's like this spiritual experience. Do you feel that when you're working on these pieces? Do you listen to music? What gets you into that creative space? It depends on what I'm feeling. Um, it always depends on what I'm feeling. I, um, I've had moments where I'm painting and even though I'm enjoying it, you know, I feel sad and I put all my everything on that brush. Um, you know, it, it just depends. I can be singing and painting. It just depends the mood that I'm in. But it's it also, I, I also use that as I get lost. Mm -hmm. I completely just get lost as I'm painting. It's, it's my, like my little relaxing space where I feel safe. I love what I do. I can't wait to finish that piece. So it's kind of, it's kind of relaxing for me. Are you still working full time? No, this is my full time job. Wow. Uh, this is your, this is your life. That's the dream. Business. Yeah. 
just to get to be in that space all of the time. I imagine you being very centered and relaxed all of the time. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> because it's also a lot of stress. Um, it's a lot of stress. I, I um, have a lot of, having a business is not easy. Um, I'm learning as I go. Um, when I'm painting, it's actually like a little escape from all of that, from like mm. all of that pressure because there's a lot, a lot of pressure and a lot of stress. I love it more than what I was doing before. I, I, this is like, I cannot see myself doing anything else but this. Is there any, any part of the getting the furniture from the moment that it's in your hands to the moment that it's a final product? Is there anything that you really don't like to do and, and how do you manage that? Uh, prepping. <laughs> <laughs> prepping a furniture is a lot of work, mm. um, especially when there's repairs and it takes longer to actually see the final product. Um, when it's sometimes a big project, I can get bored because I really want to finish and move on to the next piece. Um, so yeah, it's a, definitely prepping. <laughs> <laughs> That's the least. Uh, do you set goals? So do you, do you have it in your mind? Okay, this month I need to make this much. So I need to work on so many projects. How, how do you manage the, the finances? Because being that this sustains you, right? I imagine that you have to think about those things. How, how do you go about that? Um, I actually try to book ahead. Um, and, and it's more customized pieces or customized cabinets that, um, that I try to have that because that's actually like a set, basically a set check that I'm getting. Mm -hmm. Everything else that, um, that I do when, when I don't have pieces. So I try to put a, a, one of my pieces in between um, so I can have another um, source of income coming in with the same thing that I'm doing, but this is my piece um, too. I like to be at least a, a, a month uh, booked ahead of time. Wow. So you have to promote yourself. You have to be out there. And do you have a website or how do you promote it? I have the Instagram. I have the Facebook. I haven't been able to work on the website. I had a website before. Um, I really don't, I'm really bad with technology, like, <laughs> like I said, <laughs> but I am, where I'm looking into getting the website back up, um, but mostly Instagram and Facebook, Offer Up, Marketplace, all of that, and then the, the more work that I get is actually from more mm -hmm. to referrals, so people that recommend me, people that I already have worked for, and they say, oh, look, we have this person that does this and they call me and then that person tells another person. That's basically how I get um, the jobs. Awesome. That, that's the best recommendation by word of mouth where your work is being valued and, and there is testimonials that come with that, right? I know that you're trying to restructure yourself now, figure out how you make it a uh, formal business, sort of speak, because small businesses usually start, you yes. know, Let's see what can happen. Let's see what I can do. What made you realize that you were in, in that place and, and what you're doing about it? Organization, it's really hard for me because besides doing the actual work, um, I have to promote. I have to do invoices. I have to do estimates. I have to do pickups. I have to do drop-offs. Besides the workspace, I have my son. He has school. He has his jiu-jitsu classes. He has, you know, I have family and friends. So I have to manage all of that. And I saw myself slacking on some areas that I needed to do more in my business. So um, I'm the type of person that always likes to learn and be more, um, more, more as a business, more as a business, more organized. Yeah, so as a small business, you have to be your marketing department, your accounting, finance, your, your uh, publicity. How, how did you navigate that? Like, were there did additional resources that you tapped into? I know there's resources online, how to jumpstart your business. Um, there's information on social media, but 
is there any advice or, or places that you would recommend other people that want to start their own business to go to? Well, I, I started I started 10 years with the hobby, but I usually, I would say maybe two years and a half where actually I started doing it full time. Mm -hmm. um, I had a background of working at a renovation company for about eight years. So I was doing customer service. Um, I was doing also invoicing and work orders and estimates. So I kind of already had uh, uh, a little background. I had a little bit of background because of that um, on how to uh, put, uh, how to create a, an estimate to our work order. So that's basically what I'm doing right now. Um, I try to get more organized with everything but it's been it's been about two years and a half so i'm still learning a little bit as i go um i was i was working in that job basically getting paid well i was doing sales so i was on commission and and um in salary so i was getting both but i was very unhappy <laughs> i was so unhappy then um i didn't really have a lot saved but i knew if i wouldn't get out of there uh, that was going to be my days every day. So I just took the risk and I quit. <laughs> and I just decided, okay, here we go. You have to go 100%. So awesome. that's what I did. Yeah, but you're doing more to grow, right? What are you doing to grow as a business owner? Um, definitely do research. Um, I'm taking a class uh, with Elila. I'm learning a little bit more. Um, doing a lot of research, trying to, to say, I mean, everything. <laughs> I try to do so many things. I mean, as a person, you know, you do a lot of things to grow as a business. It's, you have to learn um, a lot of things, uh, a lot of licenses, new things that I was not familiar with that I'm trying still to learn and grow as a business. You are taking a class with us with the Interfaith Organization for Human Integrity that are putting out a course for small businesses or small business um, aspiring people who have barriers, right? And, and trying to open up a business or maintain a business or sustain themselves from the work that they do or have barriers trying to find a job. Um, and, and that's where you come in, right? You're yes. a small business, you're an immigrant and you are trying to create this legacy with the talent that you have discovered in you, which I think it's awesome. I mean, sometimes we think that the only way to succeed is by going to college or the, getting a career, right? But careers come in so many different ways. And I think that that's the piece that is admirable of you, that you are so young and you've already created a path for yourself so that you can be self-sustained and you can sustain your family, right? Because you and your son are a family and you meet all of your needs through the work that you're doing. And I think about the, so I, I helped direct a nonprofit, a mentorship program for high school students. It's called the Saturday Business Academy. We mentor them and tell them about college and business and entrepreneurship. So I can see our students learning about you and just, again, getting inspired to start their own business and not feel like they have to go through the traditional corporate path, that there are other options. And of course, the business and financial literacy helps anyone. Um, those are important pieces of information to know and understand in order to do what you love. Yeah. So you have been doing this and, and you love what you're doing. What's your dream? Where is it, what it, where is it that you want to take your business? Um, obviously, I want to have my own shop. Um, my own shop where I can display um, the furniture. Um, of course, I want to do that. I want to... I want, I, I, I've always... Um, like to teach others or some of my friends that started um their own uh, vintage uh, high chairs business and of course she also um, needed to restore the chairs so she asked me and i was like yes let me tell you how it does so eventually i would like to teach others 
um, what I do. And so they can learn, like, they can save so much money, you know, and teach classes. And I've seen these people that travel um, so they can teach and have workshops. So I would, I would, that would definitely be one of my, my, my goals. That's great. So in the business world, at least in the small business world, there is this notion, right, that the first five years are the hardest ones. You have to invest in, in your business before you can make money, right? But you have been in business for 10 years, and it isn't until now that you, I, from what I hear, you see the profit, right? What were the, the hardships that you had to overcome to be where you're at? Um, a lot. Uh, being a single mom, um, a lot of the, uh, when I decided to finally, um, start, um, I was already a single mom. When I separated, I decided I was just going to do the furniture. Obviously financially it didn't, I wasn't able to, because I had really high payments and I just, I was just all of a sudden single <laughs> with the baby to take care of. Um, um, I, I, I had to go back to work. Uh, financially didn't make sense um, but that 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 decision that I made it it kind of went back to working for someone else I put my business again back in the burner I, I, I couldn't do it um, until I had a little bit of money saved um, to invest um, I decided I was not gonna do that so it was really hard to take that risk, knowing um, that I was not going to depend on a check anymore. Mm -hmm. It was all going to be on me. Um, oh. From getting a truck um, to load the furniture, um, from carrying furniture all by myself. And we're talking about wood furniture. so it was That's heavy. Very heavy. But I managed to learn how to load and unload using my truck instead of my body <laughs> so uh, most of the most of the um the weight was on my truck to load and unload um that was really hard also when i started selling um especially with with the coronavirus my mm. son was at home right um, so i had to work be a teacher be a cook <laughs> all at once um so it's been a couple of of hard um moments there moments yeah that i've gone through but i think everything that i i i've been through i have learned so much from everything so would i like to change some things maybe sometimes but i really wouldn't um, mm. i wouldn't have learned and be where i want to be if i wouldn't have gone through everything i went through so your creativity does not know, does not only apply to the products that you produce, right? It is also how you conduct your business. What can you do? Where is how do you solve the problems and the challenges that present themselves? You know, I can imagine. I mean, I'm trying to envision if you have a truck and you have a big dresser and it's only one person lifting it. I, I I imagine that that requires ingenuity to be able to to do it. Yes, Lily. Yes. Question that I have is: Do you know other people that restore furniture or have similar businesses? Yes, I do. Are you guys in communication, like sharing tips with each other? Because I can also see you're you're building your brand here, right? You're right. you're you're building. Um, your company and I, down the down the road I can see you creating um, like lesson plans on the internet and for giving that out to people all over the country they can purchase your course bundles on how to do this how to make your business because all of this information is useful and for people that want to do the same thing they'll purchase here I am just thinking, I'm like, how can I, how can I invest in this business? How can I, um, there's just so many possibilities for you, Lily. I am extremely excited for you. You are a very smart individual. 
you have the passion for it, you have the smarts for it, and there's just so many opportunities and, and ways for this to go. Thank you. I am very excited. Um, it, it's it's been a roller coaster. <laughs> it has been a roller coaster learning. Um, just everything. I never thought I would have my own business. I didn't. I always thought, okay, you're gonna have a job, you know, and you're gonna go in at the time they tell you. You're gonna clock out at the time they tell you. You're gonna eat when they tell you. <laughs> so I always had. Um, that if you don't go to college, you're not gonna make it. You know, I I didn't finish college. Um, I I took several classes at Mount Sac, um, and it was just times got hard. Um, the price on the classes went up. My mom was the only one paying, so it's like you need to get to work. <laughs> so I never thought that I would be able to to build something like what I have built and I don't even think I'm done. I, I, I want more and I want more and I want to do more and, and it's very exciting and scary at the same time. Well, you know, from having had the opportunity to witness small business develop and having been able to work with small business owners for a few years now, one of the things that I have learned that makes a business successful it's something you said earlier, you know, you love what you do. When people start building a small business thinking, okay, I'm going to make money and, and this is why I'm going to do it. Unfortunately, that doesn't, that's a short lived inspiration, right? It's, it's an aspiration, but it's not an inspiration. The inspiration comes from doing something that you love, seeing it flourish providing the service that fills your heart. I mean, whatever the small business is, whether it is providing services or creating goods like you do, if it comes from the heart, if it is an expression of love from the business owner, the chances of success are much higher than if you're doing it because you want to make money. We, we all want to make money. That's, a, that's not just... Some people really all. love money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't and they're they motivated that? by seeing that grow too. Um, money is nice, but if you're just getting money without, I, I, of course, money helps. I'm a single mom. I have things to pay. But honestly, when I see people just tell me like, "Oh my God, it's gorgeous. Oh my God, it's not the same piece. Oh my God, what did you do?" That's that makes me very proud. Not so much how much I charge, but I mean, money. It's it's you know it's. <laughs> We, well, it's we necessary, right? But it's yeah. the second. It's secondary in terms of the inspiration of why you do the things you do. Yes. It's it's not the main reason. It, it's it. it's interesting because right now we're facing the great resignation. Mm. Companies are having so much trouble bringing in people to work. There's a talent shortage. People don't want to. They're, they're being offered uh, salaries that are really high, over $200,000, but then they're quitting because they don't want to be working those intense hours and they're not getting fulfilled from those jobs anymore. So it's a really interesting time where we're at right now. And I do love this. I'm seeing you, but I, I'm hoping I see more of this shift of people taking that or being courageous, taking that risk and and being in business for themselves, because also so there's just something so nice about having that ownership or feeling that pride for that product that you make, that service that you provide, rather than it getting lost in some assembly line or some, um, you know, some other corporation benefiting the, the most profits from it. So I do hope that we continue to see people create their own business, do what they love, and um, and with that, I do want to say we have to be voting on policies that are promoting small businesses, and supporting small businesses and us ourselves, we, we need to be, um, we should be supporting small businesses as well. Investing in that. Yeah. And, and the small business mm -hmm. is the engine of local economy. The local mm -hmm. economy thrives when there are small businesses thriving because they are the ones that employ locally that invest locally. So 
yeah, let, let's unite and, and, and support that growth. I, I'm all pro for that. And Rosa mentioned that earlier that we do like to talk about a spirituality. Um, it's, it's one of uh, our anchors, so to speak. One, because we welcome the thought and, and the, the conversation about the spiritual growth, right? Women, we are such complex, like any other human being, we are complex individuals that have many parts and we like to see women as a whole in our show. So do you want to share with us about your spirituality? Where is it? Do you have it? What do you practice? Um, I find myself um, when I'm, when I see something very beautiful, that's when I, it can be the sun, it can be a tree, it can be a, a piece of that I'm working on. And it's just, um, I was raised more spiritually to feel what I feel with my heart, what, I, what, I, what I'm feeling at that moment. And there's days that I'm just driving and I talk to God every day. <laughs> every day I can be driving and I see, oh my God, you gave me this eyes to see that tree or you gave me this to see that that sun or that sunset or anything so i i find myself i'm i'm very spiritually when it comes to basically everything i, I try to apply everything that that comes to my life um mostly uh, on the way that i feel the things that I, that i'm going through how i'm, I'm seeing I don't know if you guys understand what I'm I think to say. I think I do a little bit. I mean, I, I think that sometimes um, it's easier to feel it than to put it in words. But if, if I may be of a little help here, knowing your aunt, who is the personification of a spirituality, <laughs> Lily has an aunt who um, used to be a masseuse. I understand that she does something different now, right? And she would come to my house and you know, she would tell me, oh, the Lila, no, you, you need to center yourself. You need to find the beauty on everything because everything has life. Even the table that is in your, in your home has either life that is carrying or life that is in history. It, it, there's, just, there's just something to be said about your family and how your family communicates that is spirituality that I know I admired. And I, I miss your aunt whenever I think of her. And it's been years since the last time I saw her, right? I, I remember she would tell me, okay, no, if, if your head is hurting, it's because you're not giving yourself the time to center yourself, to feel, put, get your shoes off, feel the earth, connect with God in the many ways that you can. And she would teach me this thing. So I imagine that some of that is part of your life um, because I have the privilege of, you know, knowing parts of your family, members of your family, <laughs> seeing you grow up. Um, so I, I understand it because there is a value in valuing every life experience at the moment that you're going through. And I think that that's, what your aunt shared with me that has to stay with me yeah yeah it, it's exactly how you how you said it it comes and it comes from my family um from my mom to my aunts to my uncles everybody was um connected in a different way but i got bits and pieces from everybody so i made it into my own the way that I just feel like my, my mom is exactly the same as me. I, I'm exactly the same way as her. <laughs> <laughs> but she, she is just, she'll take off her, uh, her shoes and socks and just put her feet um, on the dirt, on the ground, on the grass. And she's like, feel it, feel it, feel that, feel that peace, feel that. So with all of that, that's, that's, that's how I, I think I grew up with that. And even when I'm painting, just the, 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 to be able to use a brush to create something. Um, well, the final product too, but just everything, the connection that you have with things and, and with God, I think it's very, very important. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing with us, yes. 
Yes, thank you so much, Lily, for sharing about your business and sharing about how connected you are to not only the things that you create, but also spiritually. And, um, and thank you for imparting all this knowledge here on our show. We have come up to the end, uh, and there is a quote that you shared that I would love to share with the rest of our audience. It's very representative of you in our conversation today. Todo lo que hagas, hazlo con amor. Mm -hmm. Everything you do, do it with love. Cafecito Con is a production of two intergenerational women who hope to bring you conversations with women. You can listen live every other Thursday at noon by connecting with us via the Clubhouse phone app. You can download the app and look for us by our name cafecito con you can follow cafecito con to get alerts of our upcoming shows you can listen to previous shows by visiting our facebook page at two cafecito con that is at number two c a f e c i t o c o n and click on the watch video button on the top right hand of our page. Feel free to comment. We welcome your feedback. We encourage you to follow us and to keep listening. And we'll be live again in two weeks. And next week, I will drop the recording of this show on uh, YouTube for you to listen to. Thank you very much to everyone. And until next week. Thank you, ladies, so much for having me. Thank you um, for doing this for other women and I can't wait to see you guys again. Thank you. Thank you, Lily.